Hey guys, what's up? Rambo here with a DOA3 video. In case you don't know, Dead Ops Arcade 3 was officially teased by Treyarch on September 30th on their Twitter account. Somehow, some way, their tweet got over 30,000 likes. Maybe people thought they were teasing Black Ops 3 Remastered or something. Anyways, in this video, I'll be speculating on some external topics related to the game that I think are very important to the game's success, such as potential crossplay, accessibility, exclusivity, and leaderboards. So this video won't be really focusing on any gameplay related speculation, as I'll probably be saving that for another video. Anyways, let's get right into it. The first topic I wanted to discuss is crossplay. Right now, we don't know for 100% fact that crossplay will be included for DUA3, but it is very promising to know that both crossplay and cross-platform will be included for the other modes in Black Ops Cold War, such as Warzone, multiplayer, and even zombies for the first time. So you would assume that it would carry over to DUA as well. In case you don't know, crossplay and cross-platform on those modes means that you can play with anybody across the five major platforms: PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. So if it is included for DOA, you could hypothetically have four of the five platforms be represented in a four-player co-op match. That is, if we assume it releases on all five platforms. Because the idea of there being an inferior version of DOA on the old consoles, while it's also available on the next-gen consoles, is kind of odd to think about, as it's unprecedented for the mode. If there is crossplay on DOA, I think something worth keeping an eye on is whether or not there will be key differences in gameplay or functionality among the different systems. To give you an example, on DOA 1, there was a weird bug where you would take three dog bites before dying for solo on Xbox, but on PS3 and PC, you were able to take an extra dog bite before dying. Likewise, on DOA 2, there was an odd bug that would only happen on Xbox, where the game would have ridiculous console lag after a certain amount of time in the game, and in contrast, the game would run super smooth on PS4 and PC. I suppose time will tell, but considering that both DOA 1 and 2 had these differences in functionality, I would assume a similar issue will also arise in DOA 3, especially since it's likely going to be available on a total of 5 platforms, rather than just 3 platforms like in previous years. Just hopefully any potential issues would be minor and not compromise a crossplay system. PS crossplay would actually be really good for DOA. There are a lot of DOA players who've been playing the game at a high level for many years, and I've just never had the chance to play with many of them because we're on different platforms. So bringing people together will just be really helpful in allowing people to find frequent matches and suitable teammates for both high rounders and casuals alike. Another topic I want to discuss was the accessibility of DOA 3, and what I mean by that is how easy it would be to access and load up the game via the menus. On DOA 1, the game was initially accessed via the terminal where you would type in DOA, which not everyone was going out of their way to do at the time, but they soon afterwards unlocked the mode for all users, and added it to the Zombies menu, where it achieved modest popularity. On DOA 2, the game was far more inaccessible, as you would have to load up the campaign, watch a cutscene for about a minute, go over to the data vault, click on a random part of the screen, then watch the DOA 2 cutscene. There wasn't even any official public match support for the first few months, and I remember people in YouTube comments would always struggle to figure out how to even load a co-op game with their friends. DOA 2 was eventually added to the bonus menu where it currently resides, but it took about 3 months for that to happen. And while the game experienced a slight popularity surge after that move, I think it was a case of too little too late, as many casuals and YouTubers stopped playing after those first couple months and never even knew that the game existed or just didn't bother giving it a proper chance. There's actually a metric available, apart from leaderboard numbers, to compare the popularity of both DOA 1 and 2. You can see how many people, as a percentage of the game's users, unlocked the achievements for both games. And mind you, these two achievements for DOA 1 and 2 consist of simply loading up the game, so it's a very fair measure. For Dead Ops Arcade 1, 40% of Black Ops 1 players ended up loading up DOA, whereas on Dead Ops Arcade 2, only 22% of Black Ops 3 players ended up loading DOA 2. So that's a long tangent for me to get to my point, that I hope DOA 3 isn't well hidden like the previous games, particularly DOA 2. I understand the whole concept of it being a bonus mode, and finding it in the menus is sort of like a retro easter egg of sorts, but with DOA 3 already being marketed by Treyarch for the first time ever, I am quite optimistic that it'll be easier to access. Preferably, I would like to see DOA 3 be listed in the Zombies menu from the get-go, but data miners have apparently already figured out that DOA 3 will likely be listed under Warzone. So perhaps you would unlock DOA via a terminal or arcade machine in the Warzone map itself, and then it would become permanently available in the menus after that. Even that seems kind of convoluted for most players. 
But another possibility, would it be enlisted under Warzone, is that everyone with Warzone would be able to play DUA, regardless of if they own Black Ops Cold War or not. Since Warzone is free to play, perhaps the UA3 would then also be free to play, and would be exposed to a much larger player base, as the free to play version of Warzone has over 75 million users since its release in March. This idea is of course a bit more far-fetched, so if I had to guess, I would say that the UA3 will be under Warzone somehow, but you'll need to own a copy of Black Ops Cold War as well. One final concern with it being enlisted under Warzone is that hopefully that wouldn't impact the functionality of the DOA servers. Because whenever I'm on Twitter, I'm always seeing people complain about the Warzone servers being down or something. So hopefully the game is nice and stable for super long high round games. Another thing I wanted to talk about is exclusivity. There's been a lot of speculation swirling around that DOA3 will somehow be part of this exclusivity deal that Activision has with PlayStation since 2015. In case you didn't know, for Modern Warfare last year, the survival mode was a one-year exclusive for PlayStation users, which was heavily criticized by a lot of fans, gaming outlets, and YouTubers alike. But the general mindset eventually came to be that the survival mode was sort of like a sacrificial lamb, as it satisfied the exclusivity deal while not compromising other aspects of the game. For example, in Modern Warfare, all the maps and updates released post-launch were available at the same time for all platforms, which was radically different than, let's say, Black Ops 4, where Xbox was getting everything one week after PlayStation throughout the entire DLC season. So in regard to DUA3 being a potential one-year exclusive or something along those lines, certain YouTubers and fans are almost ready to speak it into existence as fact at this point, which is really pissing me off. If this baloney ends up happening, I'm gonna take a shit on the soul of every individual on YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter who has even remotely suggested the idea that DUA3 will be the sacrificial lamb for this exclusivity deal, you hear me? Anyway, such a thing would of course be two steps backwards for the mode, as with crossplay and other features, it seems like DUA3 is really posed for a big year. I know people would eventually get to play it on Xbox and PC one year later, but there are a lot of great players on those systems, and also millions of casuals, who would only really play the game for the first year of its release, as that first year is always the most fun and critical, as the game is constantly being updated, people are learning new things about the game on a daily or weekly basis, and records are changing quite frequently. So exclusivity for DUA would be such a sadness in my opinion. But anyways, no point on dwelling on that, as it either isn't gonna happen at all, or it is gonna happen and the deal is already signed, and Rambo can't do nothing about it at this point except cry. I will say this though, I hope there's no update exclusivity for DOA. Modern Warfare didn't seem to have it, but the previous two Black Ops games did, where PlayStation would receive updates as much as one week before Xbox. Back in DOA 2, they didn't even publicize that they had an update exclusivity deal, and frankly, I'm not even sure if they did have an official deal at the time. It might have just been some weird issue where Microsoft had a different process for approving patches or something like that. Like, for DOA 2, I would be at school and I see there's patch notes for DOA 2, and I was like, oh sweet, finally this bug is fixed, I can't wait to play a high round game this weekend. And then I would keep reading the patch notes, and it would sometimes say that the update was only for PlayStation, and that Xbox would be patched at an undisclosed future date. And then I would say, oh. The final external topic I want to discuss in this video is leaderboards. For whatever reason, Black Ops 4 had a pretty bad leaderboard system, where you couldn't even track global entries or even see the highest round survived from your friends for any of the maps. I made a video back in May 2019 where I talk about this issue more in depth. It'll be in the description below if you want to check it out. Anyways, Modern Warfare seemed to bring back leaderboards to a more natural state, but with crossplay for that game, I noticed that they also had a shared leaderboard system. Granted, you have the option to sort the leaderboards based on a specific platform as well, but the idea of PC having shared leaderboards with consoles is a bit silly to me, and I hope DUA3 wouldn't follow this approach, because there are way too many cheaters on PC. Just look at DUA2. The game has been out for nearly 5 years, and the leaderboards on consoles are still clean as a whistle, whereas on PC, that shit got modded a few years ago. But I gotta give DUA2 credit for its leaderboard system on consoles, as not only was it never modded, but you were also able to track stats based on the number of players in your match, and at some point post launch, it also started tracking your stats mid game, which meant if you disconnected, your round would still register on the leaderboards, which might just be one of the greatest innovations known to man. There was also a leaderboard reset once the game stopped being updated, which ensured that every everyone at the top of the leaderboards nowadays played on the same version of the game. And there would also be occasional instances, even as recent as May 2020, where someone used a little known exploit to achieve 400 million points on the leaderboards, which was number one for score at the time on PlayStation. And that bastard was removed from the leaderboards like two days later. Imagine playing DUA2 in 2020 and you spent dozens of hours doing a monotonous glitch in order to illegitimately inflate your score, only for that leaderboard entry of yours to be removed that same week. 
How embarrassing. Anyways, that about wraps up the video. I'm probably going to be recording a podcast in the near future with a couple of other players where we talk about what we'd like to see out of DUA 3, more so focused on the gameplay side of it. So if you have any topics or questions you'd like us to discuss, just let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.